And good morning and welcome to Health Talk on AM 1270 and uh, 96.5 FM KXBX. It's Health Talk, Paul Thomas, Bill Kearney, North Lake Medical Pharmacies. And Bill, the rain out there, is, uh, is, is it wreaking havoc yet or is it well, still pretty mild? You know, I don't know how much we got last night. I live out, to rain a lot. out by Canocti and it was, uh, it was raining pretty heavily. Mm-hmm. I forgot to look in the creeks when I came in this morning, <clears throat> but... Uh, uh, I'm on my way up to Eureka to see my new great grandson. Congratulations! And, uh, thank you. And yes. Seven pounds, so many ounces. Uh, <laughs> Grayson is his name. Grayson. Wow. Um, I met a kid named Grayson over the weekend for the first time. Oh, did you? I was. Well, it must be a popular I was, name. I was kind of feeling sorry for my grandson. You know? <laughs> hey, Grayson. I, you're just going to call him Gray. Hi, Gray. Gray. Yeah, you know, is know. that your first or last? No, I, Grace. I hope he um, doesn't get called Grace. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. I, I have a granddaughter named Grace Maybe from Grace, yeah. uh, one of my daughters. Uh, so, <clears throat> I you know, I, I don't know what will happen. But uh, anyway, we're going to go up and uh, and uh, see uh, this new marvel of life and uh, wow. then come back and um, getting ready to go to Hawaii next week. So we is re- true, yes. We recorded a, <clears throat> a show yesterday, which will be uh, on next Wednesday, and then uh, we're only going to be there a week, so... Uh, it's my 43rd wedding anniversary. Wow. Congratulations. So uh, looking forward to uh, gimping. So many milestones. Huh? So many milestones. So many milestones. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> so I'm looking forward to uh, getting over there and maybe uh, exercise this broken leg uh, a little bit, doing some snorkeling and... Uh, <laughs> It just sounds so weird. Exercise the broken leg. It's yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. your recovery turnaround time is phenomenal. It's uh, well, you know, you yes, be in the world Guinness Book of World Records. Yesterday, I I didn't even use a cane. I got up and <laughs> I had a friend of mine come for coffee, and I said, "Look, I'm not even limping." Wow. By the end of the day, Amazing. I was not doing well but um and i see i forgot my cane today it's, uh, in, it's well, in the car you had the chauffeur today yeah so yeah Dan so, dropped you off so but i'll be driving uh she's never driven my car before today and so she's Uh-oh. had a couple of parking lots to pull in and out of <laughs> <laughs> and, you know it's one of those that start with the button yeah, yeah i yeah, forgot yeah. to tell her that and then so she she's gets in and she she over. knew it was the button but it wouldn't start because you have to have your foot on the brake, you know. So she was just ready to call me out of physical therapy, and she saw the little reading on the GPS thing saying, you know, put your foot on the brake, stupid. Uh, no, dear, I no, it didn't say stupid. She I was, never says it. No. So, um, but she's doing just fine. So uh, anyway, we're this is Health Talk. We're uh, in a rainy day right now. And, oh, and by the uh, way, Bill, just real quickly, uh, don't mind me taking pictures of you during the show. They're, they're for our website page that oh. we're developing for North Lake Medical Pharmacy and for Health Talk here. So. Uh, well, I, I, I was afraid that maybe you were just putting them up on your bulletin board at, <laughs> uh, at the house and yeah, throwing darts at them. Send them out to TMZ and, yeah, uh, and yeah. Access Hollywood. <laughs> Well, you know, we need some marketing, so um, that's great. We're going to do some uh, fun things with uh, the website and uh, uh, have some pods, I guess, that we can listen yeah, to. Yeah, some podcasting a little bit uh, mm-hmm. in here shortly for our listeners. So if you guys miss a show on Wednesday, uh, we, uh, in the near future, will have them available on the website um, through our YouTube channel. So we'll upload them into uh, to YouTube. Speaking of... <clears throat> YouTube and videos. I actually finally saw your. Uh, I guess it's your television commercial you have off your website, or is yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That was very well done. Well, thank you. Yeah, enjoyed <clears throat> enjoyed watching it. <laughs> yeah, I bet you <laughs> did. <laughs> As you, say, you always get some laughs. laughs. That's the only thing that keeps you awake is some of the uh, crap that goes oh, on. Man. I was just talking to. Uh, um, I think it was Mike. Uh, it was either Mike or George. About I think it was Mike about our Christmas show. <clears throat> mm-hmm. That how entertained. Uh, oh that yeah, we were a little bit we overly, were, we overly <laughs> entertaining that over, day. Over the line, you know. <laughs> but but uh, I swear there was no eggnog. No, no, there were not, no brandy, no eggnog, just no nothing. The thought of it was enough. We were uh, we were uh, high on life on that day. So. <laughs> Uh, well, today we're going to be talking about your life and uh, some of the advances in medical technology and uh, the difference between uh, a couple of products that uh, are used for the same thing and why one is different than the other. Um, so uh, first, we're going to talk a little bit about that. And the, the two drugs that we're comparing is ibuprofen versus acetaminophen or Tylenol. 
And a lot of people want to know, is there as much of a difference between a bottle of Advil, uh, which is ibuprofen, and Eccentrin? Uh, a lot more than you thought, actually, and it's uh, time that we really kind of made that clear because we see these as combinations in medications all the time. Uh, despite the uh, litany of different brand names and packages, there are basically two major types of over-the-counter painkillers. Uh, acetaminophen is found in a bottle of Tylenol or Excedrin, and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, which we call NSAIDs, uh, which is the abbreviation for non-steroidal uh, anti-inflammatory drugs, and a broad class that convents, uh, and contains ibuprofen, which is Advil, uh, naproxen, which is naproxen, and, uh, and Aleve, and then aspirin. There's three different kinds of chemicals uh, plus acetaminophen that we talk about that are really different, and um, you need to know what the difference is. So the purpose is going to be looking at acetaminophen and ibuprofen, although those other uh, non steroidal anti-inflammatories can be the same. It turns out that there's a lot more difference between them than we th really thought there were. Uh, of the four major painkillers, acetaminophen um, and um, anti-inflammatories, um, the first uh, acetaminophen was discovered in the 19th century, and it wasn't until 1950 that it became uh, a safe medication used to relieve pain and reduce fever, and it was soon marketed as Tylenol by 1959. Now, some of you weren't even born then, but it's become available over the counter in the United States uh, despite the, la uh, the, the later start in this country. And it's now widely used as a painkiller all over the world, both with prescription and over the counter. Uh, ibuprofen, on the other hand, is the second youngest of three major over the counter non steroidal anti inflammatories that were created in the 60s and marketed in this country in the 70s, and by 1984, it too would become an over-the-counter stateside. So uh, ibuprofen, just by virtue of be being an anti-inflammatory, can reduce bodily inflammation, and acetaminophen, by comparison, has little or no anti-inflammatory properties, meaning that if you're in pain because of a swollen ankle, you're probably better off with a bottle of Advil uh, than you are Excedrin. Now, you ask why. Uh, well, the ibuprofen, uh, the, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, actually treats the reason you're having the pain, where the acetaminophen or Tylenol actually is what we call an analgesic, and it stops the pain. It just tells the brain it doesn't hurt, but it doesn't do anything about the cause. The ibuprofen reduces the cause, and when the cause is eliminated, uh, the pain goes away. Um, sometimes you take both. You take the, the anti-inflammatory until it's um, not causing that hard pain anymore, but you may still have some residual pain, and at which time you can start taking the Tylenol. <clears throat> so um, as reported before uh, uh, in the Medical Daily, a bottle of the, the um, Excedrin may not prove uh, as effective for different kinds of relief, um, the authors quickly came to the conclusion that acetaminophen was ineffective in the treatment of low back pain and provides minimal short-term benefit for people with osteoarthritis. Uh, ibuprofen, meanwhile, can provide some relief for acute episodes of both. Now, I, I know what the classification is, and I know what they're saying, yet I can tell you I have literally thousands of patients that take um, acetaminophen or Tylenol for low back pain um, and extra strength, and it works for them. Now, there may be something else uh, besides inflammation of a nerve or inflammation of a, a, um, <clears throat> a disc or something that's causing that, but they still take it, and it's, uh, it's been effective. So um, there was a review in evidence-based nursing that found that a child's fever was more effectively uh, calmed down by ibuprofen than acetaminophen, though there didn't appear to be any substantial difference in pain relief. Uh, tension headaches, ibuprofen, cramps, uh, ibuprofen, and other NSAIDs. Uh, why did, did that work? And um, there's only clear-cut advantage of Tylenol or acetaminophen 
that they would have over ibuprofen is with the very young. And, of course, if you're aware, uh, the very young can't take aspirin-like products or aspirin because um, it, uh, acetaminophen is the only drug that you can use with infants. When ibuprofen uh, shouldn't touch the tongues of anyone under six months of age or younger, and aspirin is explicitly discouraged by anyone under the age of 18, due to its risk of causing a rare condition known as Ray syndrome. Um, the only problem I have with that <clears throat> is people my age, excuse me, and even younger, uh, have uh, were given aspirin because that's all that was available when we grew up. I was up. given aspirin. Yeah, mm -hmm. and look what happened to us. I, I mean, know, look at us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've actually got pictures that are the living proof. <laughs> Uh, so while ibuprofen may have more versatility and punch to it, it's been generally believed that acetaminophen is the safer option. That's till recently, because a 2015 review uh, published uh, in a medical journal this past January found the risk of adverse events for uh, acetaminophen in relation to dose wasn't any better to those observed with non steroidal inflammatories so we believe the true risk of an acetaminophen prescription to be higher than uh, the currently perceived clinical community. And the authors concluded uh, how these risk manifests do um, and how they work and how they're effective against you uh, vary between the two with acetaminophen linked to liver toxicity and ibuprofen uh, capable of causing gastrointestinal uh, bleeding and kidney damage. And there are other things that combined with that acetaminophen with alcohol uh, can also lead to liver toxicity. Um, acetaminophen just in more than three and a half grams a day can lead to liver toxicity. Uh, and you have to remember that some of these um, acetaminophen tablets or capsules are 650 milligram. So five of those would be over the amount of uh, acetaminophen that you would take to keep your liver uh, from being toxic from too much of that chemical. So um, a broad takeaway here is that there is um, one, that there's no perfect medication, uh, no matter how wondrous it is or great it is, if it's short-term or long-term benefits. Uh, for instance, though NSAIDs may uh, trump acetaminophen in effectiveness, they also may slightly risk your uh, ability or your chance of having a heart attack and stroke. Uh, and nearly 500 Americans are estimated to die from acetaminophen overdoses every year. So none of this means you shouldn't take a pill for your headache when it comes roaring by, but it just means be aware of the pill's potential strengths. As for what bottle you should grab off the shelf, well, uh, provided you're not suffering from any sort of specific allergy or underlying kidney uh, complications, uh, the ibuprofen probably will give you the best bang for your buck. Um, and to be honest with you, you should have two of those, uh, one of each of those products, and it wouldn't have to be ibuprofen. It could be uh, naproxen uh, as an anti-inflammatory or naproxen. Um, and those anti-inflammatories, even aspirin, uh, works very well. So uh, again, it's risk versus benefit. You've heard us talk about risk versus benefit a lot and what we should do in order to um, uh, evaluate these drugs before we take them. It's an individual decision because uh, our, our standardized health or our, our health as it stands today uh, for each of us is different. Uh, and what could be a toxic thing for me uh, may not be for you. Uh, if you had already uh, a bad um, problem in your gastrointestinal tract, then the non steroidal anti inflammatory uh, would not be the choice. However, uh, I happen to, uh, because I've had colon cancer, um, happen to be one that takes a, <clears throat> a non steroidal anti inflammatory along with a PPI, which is a proton pump inhibitor <clears throat> like. Uh, protonics or like Prevacid or Amiprazole or Prevacid, uh, Prevacid um, 
uh, Prilosec, um, also Nexium. Those are all proton pump inhibitors who inhibit uh, the acid from being produced in your system. <clears throat> so that protects me from uh, any gastrointestinal side effects I could have from the Celebrex. And also the Celebrex is what we call a COX-2 inhibitor, COX-2 inhibitor. Uh, and what that does is it keeps um, the minimum amount of acid um, being produced away and doesn't actually let us have enough of the acid to do us any harm. So um, just keep in mind with uh, non anti-inflammatories and with um, uh, acetaminophen, there are toxicities for both of those. When uh, those came on the market as over-the-counter drugs, they came at a lower strength. And also, um, when they came on the market, um, PPIs came on the market too, like uh, Prilosec and Omiprazole and Protonix and uh, Linanoprost and uh, the, the generic names for a lot of those non steroidal anti-inflammatory or uh, proton pump inhibitors. And um, they made it a lot less expensive. Now you can buy those products uh, in lower strengths over the counter and not see a physician. That's when we get into trouble. And that's what I was afraid of uh, when these products came out on the market over the counter. You can get ibuprofen over the counter in 200 milligrams. You can get ibuprofen on prescription from 200 to 800 milligrams. The maximum amount of, a, um, a, of ibuprofen that you should take is 3,200 milligrams, which would be four of the 800 milligram tablets. If you try to do that with um, uh, a lower dose, you end up taking, you know, 16 tablets uh, of um, 200 milligram at a pop, and before the end of the day, you know, you're up over 50 tablets, and uh, half a bottle of, of uh, ibuprofen is gone. With acetaminophen, uh, that level is 3,500 milligrams. So if you're taking um, extra strength acetaminophen, uh, 500 milligrams, <clears throat> it doesn't take long uh, to get to uh, three and a half grams. Um, that's seven tablets. So, and that's the total, not at a time, that's the total in a day. So, uh, and then if you're taking any other kind of uh, cough syrup or cough suppressant or over-the-counter medication for colds, antihistamines, sleeping, uh, that has uh, the drug in it as well, uh, then you're going to uh, end up taking toxic amounts of that. We still call physicians on a daily basis of prescribing a, a painkiller that's an opiate uh, that also has acetaminophen in it, and the amount of toxic drug is really the, the, uh, the non-opiate drug, the acetaminophen, uh, opposed to uh, the opiate that's uh, oxycodone or hydrocodone. So uh, we see this uh, all the time, and it's hard for physicians to get um, their arms around it and make sure that uh, we watch these toxicities. And even as the drug companies try to come out with uh, drugs that are uh, on the formulary many times and have reduced amounts of acetaminophen, uh, it's not enough sometimes to keep you from overdosing, especially if you're getting it over-the-counter and you're adding uh, over-the-counter medications to it as well. Uh, spicy foods, Paul. You, yep. you, you like spicy foods, right? I do. And, and I do too. Uh, in fact, one of the gifts my uh, uh, daughter-in-law uh, gave me was a jar of hot dill pickles and hot peppers Ooh. and um and i love them mm. and and i uh, last night i have this strange i drink a cocktail maybe oh once or twice a month uh, uh, rather than uh, a glass of wine last night was a bad day and i said yeah i'll have a, a cocktail so it was a tangere or something and i put a hot spicy dill pickle in there 
and a hot pepper. And it just flavors it just a little bit. But boy, I, uh, and, and that's where I'm going to Eureka today. <laughs> uh, when I bit into that, that dill pickle, which is usually frozen, and, um, and my eyes watered, and the first thing I wanted to do was to rub my eyes with my finger, and mm. that's how I put the, the thing in there. Because I grew some uh, jalapenos, mm -hmm. uh, habaneros actually, at home. Wow. And uh, I had, um, my, all my grandkids were there for Thanksgiving. And so I've got grandsons that are 13 years old and 15 years old. We can eat anything. So both of the, both of the grandsons from two different families said, we're going to eat the, Give it the, a shot. the habaneros. Yeah. No, we got a call. Okay. Good morning. You're on Health Talk. Oh, thank you. Bill, I want to give you an attaboy. Okay. <laughs> uh, number one, I can't believe that you're still surviving with your health record. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you have an employee there, Steve, who has absolutely been a lifesaver for me. Uh, we've had some difficulty trying to get our Part D plan straightened out and still haven't received a card from him. But uh, he's been able to go through and get my eligibility all straightened out and whatnot. And uh, he went way, way above and beyond what I think. So I just wanted to let you know that he's doing a great job. Well, you know, I really appreciate hearing that because Steve has really had to step up to the, the, the table with me being out with this broken leg. And even if I'm there now, it's three or four hours. And he's there saying, you, you got to get home, boss. You got to get home. You're only supposed to be here for two hours. <laughs> And uh, and I've seen him uh, work with people like that. He has a genuine uh, heart for people. And I, I just had a talk with uh, some of my employees this week about, um, you know, I, I really appreciate your feeling for the customer because that's what makes it able for me to go home after uh, three or four hours here. And I feel like it's your pharmacy as well as mine. And we forget that sometimes and we get uh, we've had, and, and Steve is one of those guys that helps put everything back together, and we've had computer problems for the last two weeks. And you come into work and you think everything's going to work just fine, and it doesn't. And uh, he's my go-to guy, him and Cindy, of, uh, of getting the computers up and working. And, uh, and, and it's tough when you're underneath that counter and you're talking to computer companies and they're treating you like you don't know anything. And um, and and Steve's able to do that and still work with the customer. And we have we have bad days. We all do, but uh, he'll appreciate hearing that. And uh, I know he highly respects you. But he's uh, he's one of those uh, individuals that don't come around very often that really have a, a feeling for their clientele. And uh, I'll certainly pass that on because I I highly respect you and I know he does too. So well, I I was very impressed with the, with the the way he went about it and everything and one of those days that he helped me the computer was down and there were people just door to door and uh, he was trying to get other things done and he took the time to, to do uh, do me personally so that was great and also the ladies in there they do a fantastic job so just wanted to let you know I, I, I love hearing good stuff because we hear all the bad stuff but we don't get the good stuff very often so I appreciate it thanks for calling okay Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, we're going to take a break here, Paul, and then uh, we'll come back and talk about those hot pickles. Did you know that according to the American Heart Association, heart disease is the leading cause of death among men and women in the United States? Hi, my name is Bill Kearney, pharmacist and owner of Northlake Medical Pharmacies. The good news about the heart is that a healthy lifestyle can prevent the vast majority from the disease. There are risk factors that you can't change, such as being male, being older, and a family history of heart disease, but other risk factors that you can change. Smoking. Do you know that 30% of all the deaths from heart disease are directly related to smoking? High cholesterol. Limit your fat intake and limit intake of cholesterol. Increase your intake of vegetables and fruits. Exercise routinely and drink 32 to 64 ounces of water daily. When these things are done in combination, they can drastically reduce your chance of developing heart disease. While these procedures are very important for people with risk factors, they're even more important if you've had a heart attack. North Lake Medical Pharmacy with two locations for you, and now free delivery to Lakeport, Nice, Upper Lake Lucerne, and now Kelseyville, the Rivieras, and Buckingham. 
I'm Dr. Jackie Duncan. When my daughter asked me to come to her school to talk about my job, I wasn't sure if clinician scientists would be very interesting to her classmates. But when I told them that my research might prevent their grandparents from losing their sight, that got their attention. I'm working with the American Health Assistance Foundation to find a cure for macular degeneration, a debilitating eye disease. Macular degeneration is a leading cause of vision loss for people over 60, affecting over 11 million Americans. It's important to let young people know how to take care of their sight. I told the children about ahaf.org slash kids, a website created just for them. Here, families learn about the disease using interactive games, stories, and other activities. Visit ahaf.org slash kids or call 1-800-437-2423 for free information about macular degeneration. That's ahaf.org slash kids or call 1-800-437-2423 for free information and resources. We live in the age of mobile devices. They keep us in touch and informed. They help us work and play. And they all use rechargeable batteries. But these batteries aren't just rechargeable, they're recyclable. And more than 50,000 free drop-off locations across North America make it easy and convenient. We all enjoy the freedom that mobile technology gives us. Let's accept the responsibility to pass that freedom on. Find out how you can answer the call to recycle. Visit calltorecycle.org. I'm Mia Hamm. As a professional soccer player and a future soccer mom, I know how fun and rewarding sports can be. I also know how frustrating it is when you're sidelined by an injury. So I've teamed up with the American Association of Orthodontists to ask young athletes to play it safe when playing sports. I spent years training to become a world-class athlete. I know what it takes to become an expert on the field. Orthodontists understand this too. They're experts in their field, helping kids and adults obtain healthy, beautiful smiles. They want to help athletes prevent injuries and stay in the game. It only takes a second to get hurt, and too many athletes are risking injury because they're not properly equipped during games and practices. Wear the right protective gear, like mouth guards, face masks, and helmets. Your first line of defense against preventable injuries. Play it safe, achieve your goals, and keep smiling. Visit braces.org. Okay, we're back. Hey, we're back. And Tell me about uh, them hot pickles. Well, you know, I so <laughs> I love pickles. So I uh, and I love it hot. I I bit into one mm -hmm. and it was very hot. Very hot. And so what did I do? But pick it up. Sure. And rub my eye. But yep. I was talking to you about my grandsons. Yeah, they're good. They they were eating the habaneros. Mm. And they were Did you eat them raw. Raw. Oh, no problem, Grandpa. I can, you know, I'll, I can eat these down like anything. Not even pickled, just raw off the. <laughs> just yeah, just raw off the plant. Washed them up and so. Seeds and all. What seeds and all? Oh boy! And then one of them rubbed their eyes. Oh yeah, no, I've done it. And uh, and I had to get some saline solution and put in their eyes so they could. I said, now go wash your hands like I told you to originally. Well. Here's Grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> Boys are gone. Here I am, having my one drink in a month, and and uh, rub my eyes. And oh, it's gosh, horrible. it was yeah, hot. It's horrible. And uh, and I, but I, I loved the pickles, and I loved the yep. the, the pepper that was in there. The the seeds were just, but boy, they. Uh, you have to be careful. Well, now. I got I got one better for you, actually two better for you, um, with uh, with peppers and handling them <laughs> improperly. Because uh, I used to make salsa for for Christmas, mm -hmm. and I was dealing with jalapenos and habaneros and uh, and so forth. And one year I got a, I think it was a jalapeno seed in my eye. It like as, oh. I, was, as I was scraping the seeds out, it flipped up. It just went right into the corner of my eye. Um, so, you know, getting the thing out was, wasn't was too difficult, but just, I swear, I probably was in pain in that eye for at least an hour. At yeah, least an hour. And lucky. I was rinsing you're lucky it. You didn't I, filled, I filled an entire bowl of water just so I could soak my head in it continuously and have my eye open in the water because i well, that probably saved it, your vision it I probably mean, did well and the fact that it went into the corner too yeah. i think if it would have gone in the you know in the front part yeah. of the eye it would have been really bad uh for my vision but um i got it out pretty quickly but the residual burn just kept oh. on and kept on yeah it keeps on giving it does <laughs> yes and then the other year um this is probably the year before maybe two years before i had 
I I hadn't learned to use gloves, rubber gloves when you know when you yeah. when you work with the peppers. Um uh, when the one went in my eye I was wearing rubber gloves, but uh this year I did not and nature called. And <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I went in <laughs> to use the restroom and went number one and <laughs> came back out a few minutes later. And it just burned down below like you wouldn't oh. believe. And I don't know how. I, somehow I stripped out of my clothes and was in the shower within like 30 seconds just trying to, yeah. you know, wash it off. And um, I learned quickly, you got use, to gotta use gloves well, and eye protection. <laughs> yeah. Well, the purpose of me bringing this up was about how I could help you live longer, but okay. not the way that you're using it or I was using it. Uh, and there was a study that was <clears throat> published in the uh, medical journal of BMI that suggested that spicy food may be good for you. And I know uh, your wife uses it for met- metabolic reasons. Yeah, she, because, she swears and, by it. And there's uh, evidence that supports that. But the study used information from a database of nearly a half a million people in China. And believe me, I've been to China and I've been to Korea and Vietnam. And the hot, spicy foods they eat will put you right down to your knees. And after about seven years had passed, it was found that in comparison uh, to those who seldom ate spicy foods, those who ate spicy foods uh, one or more days a week had a 10 to 14 percent reduced risk of death uh, over the course of the study. And it's promising because, uh, especially for spicy food lovers, <clears throat> however, it's difficult to draw uh, a cause and effect relationship with uh, survey type research. So in addition, and a company in editorial points out that researchers didn't account for several dietary vegetables or variables that could have influenced the final results. So, um, and and in uh, the uh, the Far East and Asian countries, um, they do eat a lot of vegetables and uh, a lot of fish, and that could have added to it because you, we didn't exactly do a double blind study. But this study adds to a growing body of research suggesting that spicy foods, of which a key ingredient is capsaicin, which is the red pepper, uh, is derived from chili peppers. And they may have a number of healthy qualities, and those include anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer properties, and perhaps attributes the, uh, that contributes to the weight loss, which is why uh, some other people pick up the use of those. So um, we're just... Uh, learning new things about old uh, products that we have that will utilize new uh, uses for these things, and that's one of them. Um, our number is 352. I mean, it's 263-5252. Uh, so this is your last chance to call me before uh, I leave next week because I have a recording uh, that we're doing next week. So don't be frustrated if you call and Paul doesn't answer because... Um, he never interrupts my there. recording. He wasn't yeah. there. So, <clears throat> there. Uh, the FDA has strengthened warnings on pain medications uh, and manufacturers of non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, which we were just talking about, uh, to strengthen the label warnings that these can cause an increase of heart attack and stroke. Now, I don't want you to panic about this, and we've talked to this about this before, and I'm not necessarily on the same page, and mainly because I take... Uh, a non steroidal anti-inflammatory, and without me taking that to reduce the pain, I would have to be taking an opiate or something like that, and I refuse to do that. Uh, but commonly used to treat the pain and inflammation, such as headache for arthritis pain, uh, it includes the drugs we talked about earlier, ibuprofen, uh, Advil, Motrin, uh, Celebrex, aspirin, Uh, Research indicates that serious side effects such as a heart attack or stroke can occur as early as the first weeks of regularly using an NSAID, and the risk may increase the longer it's taking. Uh, Taking non-steroidal anti-inflammatories at higher doses may also increase the risk of a heart attack or stroke. And evidence suggests that some, such as naproxen, may not be as harmful as others, uh, but more research is needed to confirm that. Now, the naproxen... Uh, If you've seen this advertisement of a guy, uh, a person, uh, a gal or a guy taking uh, um, acetaminophen, and they're taking it four or five times a day, and here's this person uh, that is going to take uh, naproxen, um, which is a leave, and they're only going to have to take it twice a day. 
Well, and and they're talking about, well, no, I'm not going to take acetaminophen because I have to take it so often and I'll take this drug. <clears throat> now, remember, the drug that you buy uh, over the counter as a leave or uh, a generic of that, naproxen, or over the counter as uh, Advil or uh, the uh, generic of that, uh, which is ibuprofen, um, that for people that are healthy, as well as those who have cardiovascular disease or they're at increased risk for serious side effects, um, I wouldn't worry about it so much. In my estimation, and I've studied this quite a bit, and I'm not telling you to go against what your physician says or cardiologist because I'm not, I'm not a physician, but people with cardiovascular disease have a higher baseline risk of uh, a heart attack or stroke. And this total risk is higher than that of healthy individuals. So um, say, for example, that um, the higher the risk of a heart attack or stroke, the higher the baseline of medication. And say people have found that, uh, and, and we have found that studies, people who take NSAIDs after a heart attack have a higher risk of a repeat heart attack than those who don't take NSAIDs. Uh, occasionally a use of a non steroidal anti-inflammatory, if, even if they're in good health, uh, it's unlikely to cause harm for general pain relief. You might consider taking acetaminophen uh, or Tylenol instead, which doesn't increase the risk of a heart attack, uh, to help ease muscle or joint pains or other therapies such as hot, hot, cold, hot or cold packs before taking a non steroidal if you need to take one. Uh, ask your doctor or pharmacist, find the right one for you and minimizing your risks. Uh, if you're taking an NSAID and you notice any signs or symptoms of a heart attack or stroke, such as chest pain, shortness of breath, uh, weakness in one part of the body or one side of the body, or a sudden slurred speech, get medical attention right away. And all I'm saying to you is <clears throat> there was a drug called Vivox that was a COX-2 inhibitor like the Celebrex I'm taking. And guess who was using it as an anti-inflammatory uh, after cardiac surgery was done? And it was a lot of heart surgeons that were using Vioxx. And they found out that it caused abnormalities, and they took it off the market along with one other COX-2 inhibitor. Uh, they couldn't find that uh, Celebrex or Siloxicab uh, was doing the same thing, and they left it on the market. At that time, I was taking 800 milligrams of Celebrex a day because it was uh, prior to my last back surgery, and I was in so, so much pain I could hardly move. Uh, that, Although they had uh, 400 milligrams and 800 milligrams on the market of Celebrex, it wasn't advised. And I was taking it routinely, and it was the only thing that would stop my pain. So I went to my cardiologist, who happened to be Dr. John Minotti, and uh, he ran every kind of cardiac test he could on me to see if there was any heart damage or valve damage, and there wasn't any. So I went back. Um, I had heart surgery or had uh, back surgery where they had to re-break my back um, in 2005, and that eliminated that severe pain that I had, although I still had pain. So I went back on Celebrex at one a day instead of four a day, and I don't, uh, I'm not able to um, uh, correct uh, the pain where I don't have it at all, but uh, it has uh, substantially uh, reduced the amount of pain that I have, and now um, they have a generic on the market that would help uh, also and uh, at a lot less cost than the brand name was. So we're telling people that um, where they uh, have to take a non steroidal anti-inflammatory, that's probably the best. It's also the most expensive. It put me in the donut hole the last two years in a row uh, because there wasn't a generic available. Um, and we're, uh, we're thinking that um, uh, it may be uh, easier now. Um, Speaking more um, out of health uh, than, uh, than something else, um, I was on a board of directors meeting this morning at the co-op I belong to, and it was quite early. 
And at the end of the conversation this morning, we talked about Aetna uh, Medicare D plans. And the people that are on Medicare D plans and Aetna, you may fa find your, um, your provider of healthcare services, your pharmacy, not wanting to do your prescriptions anymore because they're losing so much money. Uh, I, for example, uh, have that in my family of um, uh, one medication was $18. Uh, we had to change it to another medication. Uh, if you are somebody on Aetna D plan and you're finding that there's a loss and the pharmacy is approaching you about the loss, uh, we're trying, it isn't just community pharmacy, independent community pharmacy. It's all providers. It's not a good uh, plan for us. We're putting the heat on, uh, we have 100 or 1,500 stores in my co-op all over the United States. Uh, we're putting the heat on, on Aetna to change this reimbursement as quickly as possible, and so are the major chains because they're not doing well with this plan either. So, you know, just because you're in a plan and you're locked in it for a year, uh, maybe you don't like it. Um, you and you want to change that uh, if you do you can't change in the middle of it uh, but we can get some alternate medications for you that will probably let you get by this year uh, as I'm trying to do and not make that mistake again so um, Paul you um, you're not the size to although you're fighting your weight to have a, a bypass but have you known anybody that's had a gastric bypass no but I'm willing to try yeah <laughs> No, you just have to work out. <laughs> no, no, I'm not recruiting I this, you. I had this discussion with my wife. If well, we could just afford a bypass, well, uh, this is I'd, gonna, be, I'd be fine. Now, you won't like what I'm going to talk about, okay? <laughs> okay. Uh, it is, uh, a, a lot of people have noticed that after having bypass surgery, uh, a class of wine or alcohol uh, affects them much more than it did. And does that make any sense? And, you mean they get drunk faster? Yes. And if that's your like if that. that's your goal, <laughs> but you, that'll save you a lot of money on buying a second bottle. Sure. But in fact, the effects of alcohol are nearly double than people who've had gastric bypass. And many times, where food had been an addiction, uh, the alcohol becomes an addiction. Uh, gastric bypass is one of the most common types of bariatric surgery today in the United States, and it helps you reduce your your food intake by creating a small gastric pouch that doesn't hold nearly as much. And most of the contents of the stomach is bypassed, and the, the digestive route of food uh, directs it into the middle section of your small intestine, and that helps you lose weight by limiting the amount of calories that you consume and absorb. Uh, this direct route to your small intestine, uh, which allows your body to absorb alcohol more readily and a lot faster. So your gastric pouch is unable to break down the alcohol as effective as the old stomach would have. In addition, your body weight is likely much lower than it was before So uh, your surgery. So you get a higher dose of alcohol per pound. So if it's been effective at you losing weight, it's also going to be effective at getting you inebriated quicker. And it could possibly cause that obsession to, uh, to have you want more alcohol. Several studies compared alcohol concentrations in women who'd undergone gastric bypass with those who hadn't. And the study showed that for uh, women who had the operation, blood alcohol concentrations peak sooner and approximately double the level of those who hadn't had the operation. So uh, women who had the procedure also felt much more inebriated for longer. So in answer to the question, is that real? Uh, for you, having two drinks is the equivalent of having four drinks, at which point you're likely above the legal limit. So it's an important limitation to keep in mind for your safety and that of others. And I've know, I know a lot of people, and some people in my uh, immediate family, who've had a gastric bypass. Uh, some of them have been effective, uh, some of them have not. Um, uh, females have a tendency to gain back that weight uh, before the male does, and a lot of people, because of that, doesn't get, because their stomach stretches and they don't get to that point. Uh, some have had a different bariatric surgery other than the bypass, which makes the content of the stomach smaller. And this has uh, uh, 
to, to have other than the gastric bypass will alleviate a lot of that problem. So um, again, what happens is that before the bypass, the food enters your stomach and passes into the small intestine. After the surgery, the amount of food you can eat is reduced due to the small stomach pouch, and it's also redirected, so it bypasses most of your stomach and the first section of your small intestine. So food and alcohol flow directly into the middle of that small intestine, and, uh, and yes, it can certainly affect the toxicity of a, a drink of alcohol, um, two being equivalent to four, and your body weight being less than it was in the beginning uh, is now now becomes a problem. So um, it's something that maybe they don't um, educate you enough uh, when you leave the hospital because it's becoming more popular. It uh, is becoming uh, the surgery of choice in many people who don't want to diet, uh, like my friend here uh, across the podium from me, uh, who it's, has. It's his, not really that I don't want to diet. It's just I'm I'm so happy with how I eat now. Yes, but you know? but will you be happier when uh, I you know I got I'm home? Hoping, <clears throat> I'm hoping that when I when I am done with my sleep study and I get my CPAP machine, and I can sleep better, that'll give me some encouragement and some energy to want to go out and diet and exercise a little bit more. Well, you know, I got home uh, about 4 o'clock yesterday, and I turned on Dr. Oz, mm -hmm. and Charlie Sheen was on. Mm. And Dr. Oz was, and I'm not a Dr. Oz fan, but he was talking to him <clears throat> about if he continued lifestyle the way he was, what his organs were going to look like, his liver, his arteries, his heart. One of the things Charlie Sheen quit doing after he was diagnosed with HIV was taking his medicine. Oh, really? His <laughs> blood count now is 100 times what it was then. The inflammation has gone up considerably. And if he starts drinking again and, and keeps off his medication, he's going to die. Wow. He has that option. And uh, at the end of this show, uh, Dr. Oz said, I'll follow you and I'll... I'll do the blood tests. I'll keep up. He says, my field is cardiology, but uh, I will. So he, he showed him a diseased liver and what his liver was going to look like, which takes all the stuff from fats and all the waste mm -hmm. products out. And it couldn't no longer do that anymore if he continued doing it. It showed how the arteries were filling up full of uh, fats and high cholesterol, and the diameter of the blood vessels was getting smaller, so it would be more of a chance of having a heart attack or a stroke. At your size, Great. thanks for the for the positive. Well, at, at your size, you can you still can attain it by exercise and sure. diet. Yeah, and you can eat the kind of a diet that fills you up. You used to do that. You know, you were eating the the right kind of stuff, and I was I was really amazed you could stick to it in a house full of family that expects to have more carbohydrates. Sure. And we saw a thing on sugar yesterday where uh, sugar becomes carbohydrates and becomes the, the new death threat now if you eat too much sugar. I luckily am not a, a sugar eater. Um, I, I just don't. Desserts and sugar type things um, uh, don't affect me. Mm -hmm. But um, now I guess it's time for me to get off the air. My phone's ringing. <laughs> it's a little reminder there yeah, from, yeah. From, uh, from beyond. Anyway, um, I've had uh, uh, good luck of uh, being able to lose weight and not always the right way sure. because of uh, my health conditions. So um, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just telling you, you know, I think the world of you, I think that uh, one of the chances for you to get better is to lose that weight. Oh, and, yeah, for sure. And I know your wife will work with you. If if you do, she will give me lots of hot and, soup. And you're just getting you're just getting back, uh, getting ready for uh, the athletic season again. Yeah, basically. And you have a chance to. Did you do any any exercises with the guys when you got together? Uh, we actually scrimmaged and actually played and ran really? and yeah, did, did the whole thing and like as did, if I was a real player. Didn't die or I did not die. Yeah. No, didn't even really get. I mean, I was winded a couple times when i ran you know not not horribly but uh was kind of surprised i still had something in me yeah you know so, see but it was a lot of fun you can probably get on a team now if you, you i know. might or you know i've considered it before uh 
probably probably not fast enough anymore. I, oh, I'm not very quick. Look, remember, the, remember the people that you're playing with oh, are maybe, the uh, same age as you are. Sure, maybe. And uh, and you have the skills, and you, oh, yeah. you you know what the things are that you're supposed to do. Yeah. Um, I mean, at one time you wanted us to get on a treadmill here and do the whole show on a treadmill. Uh, I ch I challenge that yeah, to you right now. Uh, well, there is an um, exercise bike downstairs. Yeah, well, so. yeah, but it only takes one. This isn't this isn't one of those bicycles built for two. No, no, no. Uh, this, this one's about probably thirty years old too. So maybe I could uh, I could have you. Uh, that would keep you awake. Uh, sure, ride the be bike. on the bicycle for ride an hour. My bicycle. I mean, before I to ride my bicycle. <laughs> Jesus. Well, yeah, we don't want to we don't want to serenade you while you're on there, but uh, and we don't want you to have to be taking antipsychotic medication could, at the you same cheer time. Me on while I'm on well, oh yes, uh, I'll even uh, have people call in and oh, yeah. uh, and wow. say, good good, job, good boy, Paul. Paul. Yeah. But I mean, you're young. You're you're at the point yeah. where uh, you're not hurting so bad that you that it's going to kill you to do it, and no, you'd be amazed. True. You'd be amazed when you lose that weight. Well, um, there was an article recently that said if you drink, you could lose, what was it, 14 pounds in 72 hours if you just drink spicy soup broth? Well, you can, but you have to keep it off. Yeah. And that's that's the problem with those quick diets is uh, it'll come back a lot faster. Sure. if you. It's a whole different way of life. Uh, I have a tendency to like carbohydrates, and um, and I don't eat much during the day. And then I come back and and uh, and start eating at nighttime, which is the worst time, sure. and the wrong foods because yep. I, you know, I like a steak, I like uh, fries, I, you know, uh, but I also like fish. And if I can get my partner who's waiting for me out there, to uh, to eat fish and chicken with me, which we've done before, we and at 500 calories, but again on a reduced calorie intake like that, you have to be uh, really. Uh, uh, sustainable in lower doses and lower portions. Well, we're out of time. I'd like to remind you we're North Lake Medical Pharmacies with uh, two locations for you at 5136 Hill Road East across from Sutter Lakeside Hospital. Call us there at 263-6192 and outside the Bruno Chef Smart at 347 Lakeport Boulevard. Give us a call there at 263-1328 and uh, aloha, Paul. I'll aloha. see you in a week. Yeah, bring and, me, uh, uh, I don't know, a little kiki thing that'll give me bad luck well i was i, I had ordered some uh, cabin girls uh but uh unfortunately my partner said he was going to go down to walmart and pick them up and uh, and bring them up to me okay and, uh, but i said i wanted to see pictures for sure so, absolutely yeah. <laughs> all right we'll see everybody back here again in two weeks but we do have a pre-recorded uh health talk next week so we hope you join us for that as well and bill have a safe trip and we'll see everybody back here on health talk am 1270 and 96.5 fm KXBX. Thank you.